Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the fourth webinar in this series, looking at desktop container technology, where once again, I'm joined by Mark Jose, Technical Principal at ScotLogic. If you have questions for Mark, get them into the question box and we'll take as many as we can at the end. And if you've missed any of the previous webinars in this series, you can watch them all on the Scott Logic YouTube channel. If you take a look in your chat box, you'll see that I've added a link for next week's webinar, where we'll be joined by Scott Logic's Innovation Director, Graham Odds. Graham will be presenting Think Workflow, Not App, adopting a workflow focused approach to software design. So I hope you'll be able to join us for that. Now, as I mentioned last time, Mark will be showing some real code on today's webinar. So if you need to adjust your screen size so that you can see it more clearly, you can do this by moving the two lines between the webcam and the slides. So without any more delay, let me pass you over to today's speaker, Mark. Morning, morning, everyone. Um, cool, uh, let's get started then. So uh, building desktop applications with Finsemble. Um, well, there's been a couple of previous uh, webinars and uh, I'll be covering some content that we've covered in the previous webinars again. Um, some stuff I won't, um, but feel free to reach out and grab that. Um, so let's, uh, let's get cracking. So uh, I guess really first it would be good to talk about what I'm what I'm actually going to talk about today. Um, so uh, when we're talking about migrating legacy applications into uh, Finsemble, Finsemble is a container and uh, this, this diagram is pretty much all of the things. Um, so um, we're talking pretty much about single page applications today um, and how you would uh, get them into an HTML container, how you integrate them with desktop services. And actually um, today I'm gonna to cover a little bit about um, FTC3 specifically channels. I know um, I've mentioned FTC3 on previous webinars and kind of signposted you to FTC3 uh, as part of FinOS, but uh, this time I'm going to actually explore a little bit of uh, how, we, how we would use channels to, to link applications together. And then I guess the, the other focus uh, is going to be how you integrate legacy applications into containers. And there's lots of uh, sort of instruction on there on how to build something new in Greenfield um, and actually uh, migrate and legacy is, is the more common case. Uh, other things I might touch on, uh, I might touch on the browser, I probably will touch on the browser, I might touch on the message bus, I might touch on custom integrations, I might touch on third party integrations, but uh, the, the primary focus is going to be on the, the blue component here. So uh, I guess today we're talking about Finsemble, um, and uh, anybody who doesn't know what my next slide looks like is probably going to point out that uh, this is the wrong logo. Um, since I first came up with uh, the series of webinars, um, Chart IQ Finsemble have rebranded and they're now Cosic. Finsemble and Cosic now uh, basically have Finsemble as a product and, and Chart IQ as a, as a product range. So um, during this, uh, so Cosic is now the official name, and uh, during this demo, that there might be the odd reference to Chart IQ, um, but uh, that, that's a different product now. Um, something interesting um, in every previous webinar, if anybody who's joined, uh, I have another slide at this point which basically shows which part of the, the infrastructure um, I'm going to show in um, in Finsemble or in the container. And uh, the, the problem I have now is Finsemble just happened to have rebranded um, with their logo exactly the same colour as, <laughs> as the ScotLogic primary colour. So there's not much change. So the stuff that's in blue is the same, is the same colour, uh, um, is the stuff I'm going to cover in Finsemble. Um, which tooling that I'm using today? Uh, well, I'm, this is my tool chain of choice. Uh, it's not, it's by no means um, a tool chain that everybody has to pick. It seems quite common. So um, I'll be using a little bit of Chrome DevTools. Uh, I'll be using VS Code as an editor. I will be using Visual Studio today to show some of the, uh, the legacy integration stuff. Um, uh, some extensions to VS Code I'll be using. Uh, I'll be using Live Server for hosting. Um, I, I have Node.js installed. It's pretty much a prerequisite. Um, with NPM, and uh, there might be some Git in there. And I'm not going to go through Git stuff today. If I type it, just ignore what I'm typing. But I, I, I'll be using Git for most of this. So I guess um, Finsemble, uh, starting with Finsemble, it's, it's quite a big beast. There's, there's a lot to, to download, um, and they have quite a good uh, getting started tutorial. Um, I'm going to signpost you to that. Uh, the link is on the slide here. Um, and, it, and it covers a, a few bits and bobs. Um, this, uh, this particular list is, is stuff that's covered in the Getting Started tutorial, um, not, not specifically in this order. Um, and, and what I'm actually going to talk about really is, uh, is, is this stuff. Uh, I'm not going to talk so much about white labeling or deployment. Um, deployment uh, is, is a really trivial task once you've got there. This is more about building your application and getting it all working. Um, 
I might cover access for ensemble, uh, access for ensemble at the sec uh, section slightly because it, it does give some insight into what's in each folder. Um, I'm going to talk about logical integration. This is how you get your legacy apps uh, or, or apps to communicate, I guess, and uh, empowering your components. So basically, how you can uh, you can preload information uh, or, or behind the scenes uh, code to actually to actually run your application. And then I'm going to I'm going to give a little bit of a demo of the visual integration as well uh, in this particular example. Um, Past webinars, I've started with a simple web application uh, using native HTML and then progressed to using a framework, uh, React. I'm just going to jump straight in with the framework here. Um, I think we've done enough native code in HTML, uh, writing JavaScript in, in an HTML uh, page, an index.html page in line. And nobody ever builds apps like that. So I'm going to jump straight into React. And uh, I guess this is the sort of setup I'm going to create. So um, I'm going to run uh, Fensemble and I'm going to run a couple of applications and, and have them talk to each other. Um, so uh, let me just close down uh, this presentation. Oh, I'm not going to do that. Let me bring up. Let's start with the Finsomble seed project. So um, Finsomble will kick you off with a seed project. It's in Git. Um, you can uh, you can clone it out of Git, and you can. Uh, you'll need to log in. Um, to npm and pull some private packages. So you have to reach out to Finsamble for that, but they can add um, add you to uh, their npm repository or npm uh, npm organization, and that will allow you to pull the packages you need to to get started. Um, and then uh, this, in the very simplest form, you can actually uh, do nothing with this and, and run it up locally. It uses Webpack. Um, so just to give you a bit of it, I guess a bit of insight. Um, it's uh, it, it's a whole package, and there's a lot here. And actually, uh, pulling the th thing down initially can be quite daunting. I would say, whoa, there's lots of stuff here. But actually, uh, the, the the bits that you're really interested in um, tend to live in the, in the configs folder. And uh, if you're interested in white labeling in the assets folder, um, there's other stuff. Um, there's a server to help you out with development, uh, and then actually all the sources available as well if you really want to start digging into that. Um, Primarily, you're going to spend most of your life if you're building your own applications in this application folder, config folder, sorry. Um, so uh, let's run Finsamble up, and it's quite simple. I've done, I've, I've saved, um, I've already done the npm install steps. I uh, didn't want you to sit there while I start installing packages, but I can, um, I can run this from a console by running npm run dev. And what this is doing with the hood is it's, uh, it's packaging stuff up. It's, uh, it, it's bundling it. And it's gonna it's gonna launch it in a second. And what we should get is we should get a Finsymbol start bar. Um, there's a bit of red warning there. That's because I'm using a later version of Node than is currently support, supported by the container. Um, but it's it's not a problem currently. And um, so I've got my Finsymbol start bar, and I'll get a oh, welcome to Finsymbol. Um, why did welcome to Finsymbol pop up? Well, let's go and explore a little bit. Um, if I jump into my config application components, you can see that the components that are registered with Finsamble so far are the welcome component. Um, I'll come to the other ones in a second. But if, I, uh, if I expand that, you'll see it has auto show set to true in here, um, which means actually it'll start up. Um, it'll start up when uh, when Finsamble starts. Um, so Finsamble is now running. Let me uh, flick back to it. Okay. So uh, I've got this thing running and uh, this is your usual sort of uh, container layout um you can you can launch applications so let's uh launch a few things launch uh, notepad um and actually you can see and so notepad is actually a, a native application I'll, I'll come back to this in a second um and there's a few of the tools that you get in here um grab, uh, documentation oh uh, that's uh, sorry that's launched in another window let me grab another app process monitor for example and uh, you can drag these around and as you see as I start moving close you get uh, a lot of this sort of stocking and snapping and um, one other thing I quite like on this is this ability to sort of click and attach these two windows and, and then drag them there and actually um, while I don't have that in the native window so I don't have my extra icons up here um, no is a native application um, I can actually uh, if I drag notepad against something and then the same button in there. I can then attach Notepad. Um, so th this is the the sort of usual layout engine you you, you get with, with with these sort of containers. It's um it's quite nice actually in Finsom. It's quite a nice quite a nice little layout engine. 
So how do we get started building our own application? Because that's what I said I was going to do. So you have to build an application. And I've said with all of these webinars that uh, the biggest part of any uh, sort of container build or desktop container build is always building the application itself, especially if you're building something a bit greenfield. So let me, um, let me just close down um, for a second. We'll close this down. And let me... Uh, switch views if I can find it. I've got that many windows open and uh, becoming a bit of a master of window juggling. Um, so in here, I have uh, three applications. Actually, we'll come on to WinForms receiver in a second. Um, but we have uh, we have two applications here, which are pretty much uh, React apps. Um, these have been created using Create React App, um, but they're not, uh, they don't really do that much. And uh, in here, let's take the, um, the controller for a start. And in here we have, um, a very, very simple, <laughs> a very, very simple app, probably one of the simplest apps we've, we've seen, uh, not an enterprise app by any, any sense of the word, but easy to follow. Um, so we have one component called app. We've got app two, we ignore app two for now, it's just a, an iteration of app. And then we have an index which uh, imports app and then mounts it. This is pretty much, um, this is not a React tutorial. If you understand React, you'll know what this means, but this pretty much takes the app component and mounts it on the grid. I jump into the app component. Well, what does this app do? I um, I was looking for something to display and uh, come stumbled across a, a file, um, which is a list of a list of quotes from some famous people, and uh, thought, oh, that'd be cool. Let's uh, let's have a, a thing that uh, quotes us every now and then. So, um, let's spin up Ensemble again. Uh, Google some windows, bear with me, bear with. We will spin up in dev mode again. And then what I can do is I can, um, I can spin up my local app. So let's spin up a controller, call a controller. So I'm in the command window here. This is, this is a um, great react app. So I can just do npm start here. So we've got Finsemble running, a little toolbar here. Let's close, uh, welcome to Finsemble. We don't really need that for this bit. Um, so what this has done is this has spun up um, a, an application running on port 3001, I think, yeah, port 3001. So what I can do with this is I can go into apps here without any configuration. This is, is purely pointy clicky. Uh, do new app, and I can say this is a color. What did we, which one did we spin up? Controller. So this is a color controller. And actually, we'll just make a, we'll just make a note that this is from Create React App. Um, and, and actually, let's, let's stick it. So we need to stick the URL in. And it's running locally, so it's on HTTP local host. Where's it say it is? 3001. Um, confirm that. Um, so now in my apps menu, I should have my CRA controller controller. And if I spin this up, we get a little application here, which Looks a bit like this. Um, let me run you through what this is. So, if we look at my app, uh, Jess, I um, will come back to the FSBL bit in a second. Um, basically, what we're doing is we're loading some quotes um, from quotes.json, which was the file I just showed you. Um, we're importing that, and uh, we have. Uh, this thing called uh, generate quote index, which basically just looks for a random number between zero and the number of quotes we have. And uh, what we can then do is we can then pick a random quote and uh, you'll see that actually uh, it's picking a random quote and then it is outputting it uh, here with the author of the quote. Um, so what are all the other buttons? Um, so I mentioned I was going to talk about FDC3, um, FDC3 channels um, specifically. Um, channels are a way of linking windows um, on channels that you can uh, then uh, send to groups of other windows from another window um, to distribute information to, 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 to collections of windows. Um, so what I'm going to do um, now is we have uh, this application running here. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm going to run up a second application, which can be a receiver of this information. So uh, just npm start, and I'll, I'll cover what, how both these apps are built in a second. But I, I kind of wanted to show you the functionality first. Um, I'm sure a lot of people on the call are 
familiar with what channels are, but I just want to cover it for anybody who's not. So this will start in 3002. So we're going to do the same process again, where we, we jump to Finsample and we do a new app and we'll call it color receiver. What did I call it? Did I call it? I was called CRA, didn't I? CRA, just, just to distinguish. And let's do a HTTP local host uh, 3002, I think. I might have got this wrong. Let's see. Uh, so we've got color receiver. Let's put color receiver. Great. So you see, color, color, uh, color receiver has received nothing. It's got, it's got these little quote marks. And uh, we can have a few of these. Let's have a few receivers because we want to send them more than one thing. Let's, uh, let's strip this one down. I think what we'll do, we'll dock a few of these. We'll, we'll make a bit of a layout. So let's stick them together and uh, let's stick them together. Let's do that. Stick that in as well. Um, right. So what we can do is we can we can link groups of windows. So um, this main controller window is currently not linked to anything, but we can see actually maybe this lives on the uh, the purple and the uh, the green channels, channel one and channel three. And, and let's put this on channel one and let's put this on channel three. If we then click uh, send to linked channels, um, it's going to send this quote to the other channels that are linked. So it sent the, the quote to the other two channels because uh, we said it's linked to one and three, send to linked channels. And uh, channels what the, the one and three, the purple and the green channels have received the quote. It's then generated another random quote. Um, the question isn't who's going to let me it's, it's going to stop me uh, yeah probably apt um likewise um we don't have to target all the channels so the, the the this window is inherently linked to channels one and three but actually we can choose to send it on that channel let's 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 spin up another receiver and let's dock this one down here oh, let's make it a bit uh, smaller first so it doesn't go up the bottom of the screen and we can grab the bottom of it uh, I don't know how fluid the video is, but um, the uh, the windows are snapping to the edges of other windows as I, as I drag them about to you. I don't know whether you can see that. And if we put this on channel two, you can see that this window is not linked to uh, to channel two. So if I do send link channels, it won't go to the yellow channel. But what I can do is I can specifically send the yellow channel um, in my actual code. So these buttons aren't buttons provided by by Fensample. These are these are buttons in the code. So let's go and. So set channel two. Let's, let's go and look at the code and, and let's see what this is doing. So um, let me quickly run you through. Um, this is the this is the code for let's kill that, kill that. And let's make this a bit smaller because we don't want interest in that. So this is the code for the controller app. Um, so um, Finsamble puts this FSBL object on the window. Um, and uh, it does that. Um, before it initializes your app. So uh, what we can then do is we can then say, right, grab Finsamble off the window. And then uh, if we've got Finsamble, uh, then grab what we what Finsamble calls the linker client. Um, and, and, and we'll just keep that for later. We've got this horrible array of channels and I'll come back to this in a second. Um, but these are basically the channel names that are, are configured as the default channel names and, and, and how I want to represent. Um, We've got this generate quote index, which is just for generating random numbers. And then we're using React hooks. Um, I'm not, again, I'm not going to go into React hooks here. Um, you have plenty of information, but React hooks were included in, in uh, React 16.8. Um, and we just use that to maintain state of the current quote index. So we have, uh, we take the channels and then we generate a bunch of uh, divs, um, which when clicked, um, we'll call this on send quote. On send quote, we'll, call, call, uh, we'll actually look at the key. If we've told it the key, i.e. which channel to send to, the key is the channel name, and we've got a linker, then we'll create this payload um, of data type quote with the actual quote, um, which contains the quote and the author. Uh, and if um, there's a key specified, i.e. we've said send to a specific channel, we'll put whichever channels we've asked it to send into an array on the payload of the channels. And then we call linker publish, and, and that will then send this into Finsamble. Um, Finsamble will then distribute that to, uh, to the channels that I've asked it to distribute it to. If the key is not specified, it will send it to the default link channels of the window. So that, that's what that's doing. Um, let me quickly flick to the receiving end. So on the receiving end, we've got a few little bits to do. Again, this receiver has one component, app.js. 
So the receiver is a little bit different. Um, we can't really start um, receiving until we have, um, we've actually got an instance of, of Pensamble to receive uh, things on. So um, Pensamble has this uh, concept of uh, running thing, running preloads. So you get this on ready listener and uh, that's provided in, in, in two ways um, for legacy support. It's either on FSPL if it exists, add event listener on ready, or you can add a default event listener to the window um, with for FSPL ready. Um, so what we're doing here is, uh, I'm not gonna cover use effect, but uh, use effect with an empty array means that this uh, function block will run when this component mounts, uh, and it'll run its unsubscriber or its, uh, its cleanup function when, when uh, when the component unmounts. So it's going to add these two event listeners. Um, when we get this on ready signal, we'll, we'll run a preload. Preload can do a bunch of things. I could have just put this code directly in there, but th this is sort of a uh, reasonably common syntax. So you get this function that runs on your preload and then you tell it to do a series of things which are either important in functions or, or, or included here. I've included all these in line just for, just for clarity. Um, so we call create linkage. Um, this does, uh, again, needs uh, an instance of the linker client. We, we saw that before. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna subscribe to messages uh, where the payload type is caught. And uh, we will receive a payload and the payload mirrors what, what was sent. And we'll only receive this actually if we're on the channel, on the channel if we're linked to the channel that, that we were uh, preparing to receive on. So that, that's what's going on behind, the, behind this. Let me just go and do that again. Uh, what's been so oh, there we are. Great. So uh, we can see that, and, and we can add any number of these uh, of these um, apps. And actually, we can put things on multiple channels. So I could put this on channels one and four, and get rid of channel three on here, and send to um, send to link channels. And this one will receive it, and the rest won't. Or send to channel four. This one will receive it, and the rest won't. Um, so any combination of these things. This allows you to group um, a bunch of windows where, with with context. So, um, right, where do we go now? Um, well, one thing I didn't like um, is if you jump into this app, um, I don't wanna have to maintain this list of channels here. Um, this, I'd have, to, I'd have to change this, excuse me. <clears throat> Let me just have a drink. I'd have to change this every time uh, the default channels changed and, and that's not gonna work out for me very well. But what I really want to do is I really want to ask Vinsamble for that list of channels. So uh, enter app, app two, where channel list has gone. And we've used use effect again. So um, we can actually do some stuff um, when 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 uh, when Vinsamble is ready. So we got uh, we've got this on ready event. We've already seen this on ready is called. And actually rather than having a series of events, I've inlined it here. So we've already got a handle linker. We can call us get all channels. And this will actually call a um, uh, uh, will actually give us a list of channels, which we can then call set channels on. We can maintain channels using uh, use state, and then we've got our channels. Um, the good thing about that is you'll find that if we go back to Finsamble, you see the colors here aren't quite right. They don't quite match. I know it's a bit weird, but they, they, they don't. I, I, that's my best guess. Um, if you actually go to um, app two, and if we just change this to import from app two, run app. Um, We'll see this change pretty much straight away. There we go. So the colors now should match. Um, and actually, that, that's the good thing about running Finsamble in the sort of dev mode, um, hosting apps um, and running uh, your apps using Create React App. Um, basically, the web server there has just instantly reloaded that. And so that's changed live on the fly. So I can, I can develop this application running in Finsamble on my desktop pretty much live. So um, that's applications. Uh, let's, uh, let's go back to my presentation and, and, and move on a little bit. Uh, if I can find it, where is it? Juggling Windows again. This one, great. So um, that's all good. That's all well and good. Um, migrate, but again, that's a greenfield app, something I've built from scratch in uh, in React. Um, it's a web app. Uh, I've, I've, I've done some pointy clicky stuff to get it running. Um, there's a few things I probably want to gonna want to do there. We don't want people to have to point and click to add applications for a start. Um, you can you can add a normal website as an application if you really want to. Um, but what you really want is you want your applications uh, deployed uh, with uh, with uh, Finsamble when you deploy your Finsamble installation. 
And uh, this is going to be more and more common when you have things like .NET, uh, Java, uh, applications. So um, I've covered this in previous webinars. Um, I consider um, legacy tech to be some of these things. Um, C Sharp, Java, .NET Core are still very, very much a thing. And uh, it's going to be in most organizations, you're going to have C Sharp, Java, and, and .NET Core applications uh, that you still want to build and you still want to deploy. Um, Mono.NET Framework and WPF still hanging around a little bit. Um, I would say they're getting towards legacy. Um, Silverlight Swing, WinForms, um, pretty much legacy. However, um, WinForms is my go-to when I'm when I'm when I'm doing these webinars. Um, and you're going to you're going to want to take those applications and deploy them. You're also going to want those applications to interact with uh, with your new applications. So um, I guess what uh, what I've just covered there is, is a bit of channels work. Um, I'd like to do another demo, which uh, which basically shows you how to uh, basically shows you a bit about the, using the FinSample linker client uh, inside of a native application. Um, how you configure a native application to run with FinSample. Um, I've already given you a bit of a demo of channels, but it'd be good to actually see that in action. And, and the other thing is, um, I'd like to cover a, a lot of the dev tools uh, given to you by um, by FinSample. Just, just give you a look at what they look like. So. Let me again uh, just juggle some more windows. Uh, this one. Um, so we've got this thing running. Um, let's switch context into Visual Studio. So I'm going to pull Visual Studio across. Um, so this is now Visual Studio, not Visual Studio Code. I tend to find uh, Visual Studio is much better for uh, building .NET applications where you have a UI component. Or a native UI component. I still use VS Code for .NET Core stuff when I'm building uh, command line or, or, or um, console-based applications, Windows services, that sort of thing, back end type application. Um, so how do we get started with Finsemble um, in Visual Studio? Uh, well, there's a NuGet package, as there is with everything else. I'm not going to cover that. You all know how to install NuGet packages, I imagine, if you're .NET developers. Um, but one thing we need to do is we need to, um, this is everybody else, uh, recognize this as a familiar starting point from a, a, a .NET application. Um, one thing you need to do is capture the command line arguments. Uh, FinSAML needs the command line arguments to pass through. Uh, so I'm capturing the arguments here and I'm passing them into the constructor for my uh, my main form. In my main form constructor, we're capturing the arguments. Uh, it's just an array of strings and we can initialize FinSAML here. So uh, private variable FinSAML, create a new FinSAML, pass the arguments and this main window. Uh, FinSAML needs us to start capturing window handles, et cetera. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to know um, once FinSAML is pretty much ready, once my native application running is connected to FinSAML and I, I've got access to your channels and, and all, of the other, uh, all the other features that FinSAML offers. So um, register, registering here on my event handler and then uh, call and connect. And FinSAML connected uh, is called when I'm done. And uh, previous example I just showed you, we've got a linker client. So when I'm connected, I want to go to the linker client and I want to uh, request all channels. And then when I've got all channels, uh, I'm going to call uh, this delegate, uh, which is on channels received. I can't spell, I just noticed that. It's uh, on channels rec um, But when I want to call on channels rec um, we can run through that. So um, a lot of the data that comes back from Finsamble comes back in this uh, Finsamble event args data, and it's, uh, it's this J object, J array, J tag, uh, J token type uh, format. Um, so uh, Link does a very good job of, of deciphering this stuff for you. Um, so what's this going to do? Um, we're going to get a bunch of channels. It's going to create a channel list. Uh, I've had to obviously set up some uh, some from JRA type uh, conversion type deserialization, if you like. It's not really deserialization, but that type of thing, uh, and something to store the channels in. Um, obviously, with stronger type language, you have to do all this. Um, and then for each of the channels, I'm going to create a button um, in here. So what does this app look like? Well, as I spin this up, it looks a bit more like a native app. Start on a different window and let me just drag it back up. There we are, different monitor. So that's like exactly the same thing. Uh, it has this is a quote receiver, and, and because it's in a native window, um, we don't have this automatic uh, linking feature in the title bar. Um, so what I've done is I've asked for the channels and uh, I've created a few checkboxes that we can toggle to link and unlink. Exactly the same functionality, ex exactly the same in a native app. So you have full access to all of the same APIs in both places. Um, I'm just conscious of time. Let me quickly uh, 
move on. So we've got this native app, we've got it running. How do we then um, get it to work um, with, uh, with Pinsample? Let me just bring Pinsample up. Um, we can't, if we go new app in here, we, we can't very well add a URL, it's not, it's not a web app. Um, but Finsarmal gives you lots of configuration to deploy native assets and, and actually to, to register native applications. So let me just stop this quickly, minimize this. I am going to close Finsarmal for now. Um, should I save my workspace? Yes, I should. I'll save my workspace. Come back where I want. Um, and then let me flick to another window. So I'm going to go back to our uh, Finsarmal seed project if I can find the right window. Here we are. And uh, so in here we had this uh, this components JSON. And actually, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Um, I'm going to pick Notepad as an example. So this is a bunch of applications that we've we've registered um, as components with Finsample. And you'll see um, the the welcome component has a URL uh, application root components welcome. So it's a it's a web application being distributed with um, with Finsample. Um, you can pass a web URL. Uh, in, in this example, the same as when I added through the UI. So that's a, an application that's already deployed somewhere else and wants to run in the FinSAML context. Um, then we have this one. So Notepad, uh, window type assimilation, um, always reminds me of, uh, the, the, brings out the, the Trekkie in me, um, always reminds me of a bit of the Borg. Um, so the Borg have officially assimilated uh, a Notepad. Um, and, and assimilation uh, is really, really useful where you, uh, where you want to take a native application. Uh, but you don't own the code. Uh, you can't add code to it to, to connect to Finsample. Um, it will, um, the underlying mechanism will take control of the window handle and allow you to dock and snap the windows of, of a native app, like Notepad, for example. And this just needs to pass to the executable. Um, so you can deploy your application that way. If it's not an existing application and you don't want your developers to have to do any, uh, any integration tasks to bring it in, um, you can actually literally just assimilate the app and it will be available through through And um, That's not what we're going to do here because we, we, we own the code for the example that I've just shown you. Um, the code is, uh, we can we can uh, integrate using the Finsample APIs. Here. So let me um, if we can switch to another screen. Uh, bum, 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 bum. This is where this is the right one. Got that many screens running. This is hosted. Uh, yeah. So if I go to config in here, components, um, you can see I have in here a um, a netcode channel receiver um, called a netcode channel receiver, and actually this has a window type of native, and this tells Finsample that I uh, that it's a native app running. Um, but actually um, the application itself uses the Finsable libraries and uh, it's a bit of a long-winded path here, but I've put the full path to the debug version that we had running before. Um, so what I can do is if I just grab this out of here because this is in my deployed one, let me just copy that and switch back to here and pop this in here uh, and then spin this up again. Oh, we save it. A schoolboy error then, Ellie. Uh, let's spin this up. Actually, you'll find once uh, once Finsample is built for the first time, it's actually quite quick to uh, to spin up uh, again. Uh, I've got a splash screen. You can't see it. Cut on a different monitor, and I should very very soon have my toolbar moving. Yeah, yeah. So there's my toolbar. Um, so uh, in my toolbar. I can drop down apps, and now I have my net code channel receiver, and ta -da, it's now running. If I grab my uh, CRA receiver or controller, and I have this, um, I can drag the, oh, oh, when you click on the window behind, always the same. Um, I have these, and I can drag these about. And now I can stick these together in the same way with before, and I've got my native application running here, and I've got my, uh, my code controller over here. I've got my same channels. I can always link to that, but the same channels I've got in here. Um, there we are, native application running for example. So uh, one thing I really like about this is uh, some of the dev tools, and uh, what I can do here is, um, particularly this thing, the central logger. Um, so we're all familiar with uh, the, the logger that you get in, in uh, Chrome. Probably uh, this 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 sort of layout on the right hand side. It's not quite that, but it uh, it is very very similar. But I love the fact that I can actually see at any point in time all of the things that are running in Finsample, uh, turn all of these things off, 
turn on just the log for my uh, CRA color controller with some random ID generated in Fensemble. And uh, I can see just that. I can also filter on log level. I can um, open uh, on startup. Lots of other really useful stuff. I'm not going to cover everything here, but this, this sort of central logging idea of um, when, you've, when you've got lots of windows um, running. Uh, see, I was uh, building an application which had, um, it was like a, a blotter and, a, and I could spin out a chart or a stock watcher and I could spin out charts and, and blotters and research information. Lots and lots of different windows running lots and lots of very small React applications. Um, I can just pick the applications that make a part of my um, part of my system and then I can actually see that stuff uh, running in here. Um, there's, my, there's my NetCore receiver, there you go, so I can put my NetCore receiver on as well. Um, I actually, in the, my network receiver code, I haven't actually registered my logger as a logger, and that's a, that's a piece of work that needs to do that you need to do if you want to use the Sentinel logger from from uh, .NET, for example. Um, but I quite like this too, so I've covered a few dev tools there too. Um, I'm going to quickly switch back to my presentation and move on. So um, I guess um, this is my plug for Finos and FTC3. Um, Channels um, is a concept that's been around for a while. Um, FTC3 um, has tried to standardize a lot of that. And um, for those of you who don't know what FTC3 is, um, the mission of FTC3 is to develop specific protocols and technologies to advance the ability of desktop applications and financial workflows to interoperate in a plug and play fashion without a bilateral agreement. If you're interested in all of the channel link stuff I've just showed you in Fensemble or anything else to do with the desktop standards, I, I would certainly go and have a look at some of the FTC3 uh, stuff. And um, that brings me to the end um, of a, a bit of a whirlwind to a fin sample, I guess. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for that, Mark. Um, and just to, to point out, like I said at the start of this, I, I have put the link to join the next one in this series into the chat box. And that's going to be with Graham Odds, Innovation Director at Scott Logic, next week at the same time, 10 o'clock. And that's Think Workflow, Not App, adopting a workflow focused approach to software design. So I hope you can join us for that. Um, let's have a look at some of these questions that are coming through. So first question for you, Mark. If I have a .NET application, can I deploy it using Finsomble? Uh, yes, you can. Um, it, pretty much, it didn't get to uh, didn't get to deployment. It didn't really show any deployment um, in, in the example. But uh, the native app I actually built before, you can you can bundle assets in a zip file. Um, what you can do? Um, let me quickly quickly show that. Can I show that? Um, where's the I find the right window. Sorry, Claire, I'm juggling a bunch of windows. Sorry. Um, yeah. So um, what you can actually do is you can um, you can you can register things you want to build. So you could, uh, that's on .NET, obviously. Um, but also uh, you can also bundle a bunch of assets um, in zip files. Uh, I'll have to find it. I can't I can't really demo that right now because I've got other stuff in there. But uh, yes, you, you can actually bundle that. You bundle stuff in a zip file, and Finsable will distribute those uh, those native assets. Uh, Java.net, whatever. The answer is yes. Sorry, Claire. Sounds great. And uh, just one final one. It's not a, a question, and I suspect this this has come from somebody in the know because uh, the comment says, "Note that we've got JSON schema for the Finsomble config coming in 5.0, uh, so you get <laughs> intelligence for all config files." Oh yes, that would be nice. That would be really nice. Uh, nice sounds like a nice addition. <laughs> And, and that's about it for today. So as I said, I hope you can join us uh, same time next week. And all that remains is for me to say thank you so much to Mark. Really enjoyed this last three webinars that you've done for us. And if you missed any of the previous ones, do go and check them out on the Scott Logic website. Um, you'll get a follow up email tomorrow that will have a link to the recording of today's webinar in case you want to watch it back or share it with any colleagues. And you'll also be able to access all of the previous recordings and sign up for the next two with that as well. So thank you, Mark, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. Hope you can join us again next week. Bye for now. Thanks, everyone.